Hey there tribe, Melinda here with another little life lesson. I wanted to talk to you today about healing the hurt in relationships. Uh, we carry quite a lot of stories and memories, stored memories in our pain body, particularly as women, and particularly around our intimate relationships, because they're the people who we've trusted with our heart the most. So of course, they're the ones that we're most vulnerable to hurting our hearts and therefore putting a bit of a barrier up when things aren't you know, amazing or even then when things do get better, we're still holding on and looking for uh, evidence for them to prove the, the, the ideas that we've created about them because of you know the rough patch that we may have had. So I wanted to talk to you about healing the hurt in a relationship. Um, this has been really important for Glenn and I. As you can imagine, this is our second marriage and we have five kids, a blended family, and we have ex-partners that are, you know, they have their voice and, and their opinions and bring a lot of frustrations to our marriage. I'm just going to be honest about that. They do. And we need to constantly check in and make sure we're healing the hurt so it doesn't build up and create animosity between us. So one of the ways to do this is alone time, so simple, but spending time, just the two of you to reconnect and making sure that you're not doing the logistics thing. So not spending that whole time talking about where you need to get the kids to and who can run around and where the grocery shopping's getting delivered and all that um, crap that we have to deal with as a couple or money issues and kid drama avoiding all that and just spending alone time together to reconnect and to find that fun and that flirt that you first fell in love with. So that's one beautiful thing you can do to help heal the hurt is just to reconnect because the more you do that and spend time just being in each other's company and giggling and pillow talk and all that fun stuff, the more you can break down the stories that you start to create about your partner being inconsiderate and selfish and, you know, maybe for women that we're nagging and controlling and all those, you know, ideas that we create about each other because we're trying to get through life together and that's sometimes how we're perceived when and we're just battling it out. So that's one tip, spend lots of time together to really reconnect. If I'm honest, and I think I've shared this before, um, Glenn and I, our relationship was on the rocks at the start of the year, it definitely was. And even in the middle of the year, when there was lots going on with a couple of our children, our relationship was really being tested. And there was a couple of times when we had the conversation, would we be better off separating our families because it is so hard trying to bring them together and are we doing the right thing? You know, this was a conversation that we that we had. And of course, we're still together. So we decided that we, we needed to persevere because there's too much love between us. And we do think that this is the best situation for the kids, even though it's hard as hell. And sometimes they whinge and complain. We know we're bringing elements into each other's lives that we wouldn't have and we wouldn't be imparting on each other's children had that partner not been in the, in the life as well. So even though we've had those talks, we've had to get really raw and honest about how we're feeling and just laying all the cards on the table about how we're feeling and where the relationship's up to and what, you know how loved up we're feeling and what, what areas are feeling deflated. So that's my second bit of advice is always lay your cards on the table in your relationship. Don't hold onto it and allow it to fester and become you know, magnified and blown out of proportion because you're not speaking your truth as things come up. Please always ensure that you're laying your cards on the table table and you're just dealing with things as they arise. So right baby, I'm really struggling because you know you spoke to such and such this way and you wouldn't talk to your child that way or I'm really struggling because you spent that money on this but we really need it for this other project, whatever it might be. Having the conversations as they come and having them from a really open space, not this accusing it's, you know, my mind is the right mind. It's coming from an open space. So I'm just expressing how I'm feeling. I'm really open for you to tell me something that's going to make me feel differently about this. And if you come from that place, it really helps you just brush things away as they come up. So they literally come up and they go, they come up and they go. And we're not storing on to those old memories and creating stories about your partner being a nag, controlling, selfish, nasty, you know, all those things that we like to label each other with. So I just wanted to share that with you. Hopefully it was helpful. 
Relationships are the most testing part of our lives, but they're also the most beautiful and rewarding. So I really encourage you to, to persevere with, with giving your relationships everything that you have because it's the best way for you to express and understand yourself. I hope you're having a beautiful day, tribe.